All right, folks. Welcome back to Let's Play the Space Bar on the Mysterious JG. Uh, this is take two on this particular video because um, you know it, was, it wasn't going great anyway because uh, I got an unexpected IM while I was recording from somebody who you know perfectly innocent, innocuous IMs, just trying to have a little conversation and didn't know that I was recording. Um, but then it went to hell because the game crashed like three or four times. So I've closed up some stuff that was running in the background. Um, can't close too much more. Gotta have the space bar and Cam Studio running at the same time, or it ain't really an LP. But I'm back. Uh, the good news is that I actually beat the plant flashback last time, so now we know we can do it. Let's get to it. Here's a puzzle I kind of hate. Kind of hate a lot. I'm thinking... In the past, when I beat this flashback years ago, I must have used a fact or some kind of online tip sheet or something because I just don't think I would have figured this out. Remember how I said you have to break the water mains? Well, you've got to set the water, the ground temperature to the second lowest setting, not the lowest. The lowest will kill you. The second will break it. I'm thinking even if it had occurred to me to try to break the water mains... I probably would have set it to lowest temperature, died, and then figured, oh, I guess you don't break the water mains. It must be something else I'm missing. And I've moved on. And that, yeah. Anyway, we're here in the solarium, the planet terrarium. And we just got to keep waiting, basically, until something happens with the fact that we changed the temperature. Oh, my computer has reconnected itself to the internet. That's great. It had disconnected at some point, and my roots are in severe danger of frostbite. But I'm going to keep waiting, because that's how I roll. And because that's what the fact I looked at for this puzzle said to do. <laughs> that's the sound of the water main breaking, folks. Yes, Seed Rot, your puzzle, which is the story of a young girl uh, blossoming into the fruit of womanhood. Uh, yeah, I couldn't figure it out, so good for you. Now, this puzzle, I think I would have figured this one out, but once you're in there, you kind of spoil the whole thing. We've got the bee. Let's examine it. Reach him. Ugh, I hate being rooted. The bee sound stops. Much to your relief. The bee is really interested in that pink flower. What is that flower got that you haven't got? Ain't no flower like the one I got. The light is shining brightly on the pink flower. It's getting nice and swampy in here. Your roots are now nice and toasty warm. There's no switch on the light itself. Okay, so let's. I believe that is the right bank. We turn that down. And now that's no longer lit up, which means that the bee will probably, I don't know, go elsewhere. So let us try uh, stroking a bud. Re stroking! Oh, that feels so good! Oh, we've already done that. A rather lovely bud, if I do say so myself. So let's uh, try to bloom. Sorry, the bud is either not getting enough light or not getting enough water to open. Um, what about this one? Hmm. Maybe we need to get the thing to come over and pollinate it first. Let's rustle our leaves around, eh? Try to attract its attention, perhaps. Ah, ooh, a little exercise feels good. B doesn't seem to be moving, but apparently that did something because now we got a flower. Wow! I never imagined that I'd have such huge flowers. Flowers being like knockers for you, I guess. Okay, now it's a fruit. That's okay. It's a stroke. We stroking. Well, let's examine it first. I grew that. How 
weird. I'm stroking to the east. I'm stroking to the west. I'm stroking with the woman that I love best. I'm stroking. I hope I'm not doing the mic, per, uh, the mic breather perv thing anymore. Although I'm thinking, in retrospect, that was appropriate for the last video because it featured the photographer who came to take a bunch of camp, candid, um, semi-clothed shots. Or I don't know if semi-clothed, but just candid shots for doing things that are apparently big turn-ons. Uh, drop it. I'm not sure how to do that. I once asked mom and dad, but they got embarrassed and changed the subject in a hurry. Drop them, drop them. Well, I think we know what to do now. It's the last thing. The last piece of the puzzle, it's fantasize about the, as you may recall, the picture. It's like snowy and it looks like, to me, this has got to be like goth porn for plants because it's like winter, the silence and winter, the, the chill of death upon you. And I think this is working. It's, it's working. I'm going to... This is weird. Okay, that wasn't right at all, game. That wasn't right at all. Well, hello, dear. What have you been up to since I left? Uh, smacking him. I guess you've been busy, huh? Well, I suppose you can go off with your rebel friend since you're clearly an adult. Just make sure you're back by the time that fruit sprouts. And keep your leaves moist. I wouldn't want you coming down with something while you're away from home. It's an oddly subdued reaction to becoming a grandmother. It's Perhaps like, you should resort to using disc two. I see that while I was off this afternoon, you had a child. Well, okay, I guess you can go party with your friends in Crazy Land. And, you know, what the hell ever. It's not even partying. She wants to go off to, like, join a terrorist group. I guess her mom might not know those details, but... Yeah. Weird. Okay. Now, um, this is about the point. i got to save the game here. Actually, I don't have to save the game, because I saved the game during the video that got killed um, at a, the pro appropriate point. But this is this means I've now recorded completing that, and hopefully this video will take. Uh, but this is the point at which things started really crashing a lot. Yes, thank you, autoplay. I don't know what I need to set it at to make that stop, but whatever it is, I haven't found it yet. Okay, so we're done with you for the time being. We've got another message. Investigators just found the corpse of the cop that you spoke to in the alley, but she was found in a dumpster near corporate HQ, mm. nowhere near where you left her. And while you reported gunshot wounds, this corpse was killed by an unidentified poison. Proceed with extreme caution. Okay, folks, well, if you recall what we read about the Kerfufu, Kerfufu, whatever the heck they're called, um, she was killed by a poison, then almost certainly she, at some point, uh, that, that's how they kill things that they shapeshift into. And uh, since we found another corpse of that same officer somewhere, I think we can assume the one that we found was the shapeshifter in disguise. I don't know why the shapeshifter would do that, really. You can puzzle that one out. Other than it being like cool and exciting and adventure -y, it doesn't actually. there's no particular reason the, the evil criminal shapeshifter would do that. I'm going to save again, even though I already said I saved, but I'm going to save again because I don't want to have to listen to that message again because when the thing crashed like three times, I heard that message like three, four times. It got old. But I was thinking earlier, hey, you know, they said something about how those shapeshifter dudes have like a sort of, they do like a mind link thing, and it involves like high frequency sonar or whatever, and that the only species that can hear them are other shapeshifters and the uh, Niblitzi. It might be time to try and get some help out of Fleabix. Let's order him to... No, none of that's going to help. Let's ask about... No... Chat? You again? What do you want now? 
uh, propose a deal. I believe I know where you need to go. Perhaps we can help each other out. What do you want in return? And how would you know where I need to go? sure yet. Perhaps we can settle that later. Let me know. All right. I'm thinking that on this save game, maybe I didn't in this save game read. So let's read the, through the Krapupu thing real quick because it says right in here what we need to know, which is the thing about how the. Let's go find it again. Uh, Krapupu uses blitz and high frequency, whatever. Although the Niblitzi with their antenna are able to detect these transmissions. Okay, so now we know that the Blitzi can detect their transmissions. Now maybe we can propose a deal with the Fleabix. You again? What do you want now? I believe I know where you need to go. Perhaps we can help each other out. What do you want in return? Just some information. There's some high-frequency transmissions being generated here in the bar. Now, if you tell me the frequency, I'll tell you where you need to go. Bill? Sure! Hmm. Let me see what I'm picking up. I'm picking up a transmission. 46.3. Okay. Thanks, Felix. You'll want to catch the next shuttle to Fringle 2. Now, 46 point. Let's see, is that in my clue log? It does not appear that that's in the clue log. It appears that I should have written that down. I'll have to do that later. Well, I'll have the video to work from, so I'll be able to go back and see what it said. But yeah, that's something accomplished that we didn't do before. Uh, let's talk to these guys again, because now there's these guys instead of these, this guy. Looks like the thing is split into two identical creatures. That must be handy when you need to be two places at once. We were once one, now we are two. Okay, do I still look like Jerry Lewis? Being human, you cannot help but remind me of that great human comedian, Jerry Lewis. <laughs> okay, so one of them just nods. <laughs> gotcha. Didn't there used to be less of you? Yes, we have visioned. Now we are too. Wow. So does that hurt? No, the process is painless. In fact, almost euphoric. Oh, creepy. That is completely disgusting. Your race carries only larvae in your abdomen for months and then spew them up, wiggling, coughing, and covered with blood. You call fission disgusting? They make a good point. Have you guys heard about that excitement at Corporate HQ this morning? No, I just arrived on a computer flight from Orbit 3. Well, pardon the pun, but talking to you guys has given me a splitting headache. No need to apologize, we've heard them all. Alright. Uh, I might be going to save game overload, but I just realized that the guy we're about to talk to, for fun, I don't think he can help us in any way. I believe this is a guy where if you choose the wrong option, you can get killed. But let's take a look at him first. Seraphins usually look rich and arrogant, but this one got that look down pat. You'd better not. Seraphim's can afford top lawyers. Top lawyers. Hi. My name's Alias Noah. How are you? Not good. I, a very important Seraphim named Dwelf18, am being bothered by an insignificant human. I'm a crucial aide to an extremely important Seraphim named Devon7. You'd better not bother me. I can afford to buy your entire neighborhood and have it leveled. <laughs> the bartender was just telling me how much you look like Jerry Lewis. 
I disagree. I think your ears are slightly larger. <laughs> Buy me a drink. I'll pretend I didn't hear you trying to give me an order. That way I won't have to bribe your local administration to throw you in jail for the rest of your life. What I don't get about the orders is that they give you like several different wacky orders, but then the characters all have a generic, you just gave me an order, I can't believe it, response that kind of negates the need for more than one wacky order they want to follow. Yes, yes, what is it? Just because I have nothing to do right now doesn't mean that I want to spend time talking to a human. Yeah, I don't think we're meant to like him. Let's ask about the crime. I heard there was a big break-in today at the corporate headquarters of Amalgamated Vacuum. Did you hear anything about that? I started listening to a news report, but it was so obvious who had committed the crime and where they were hiding now that I lost interest and stopped listening. Your employer must be pretty wealthy and important. Of course. I would only work for the best. I calculate that in 419 days, Devon will be on the list of the 1,000 wealthiest Seraphins. If I give you a few kills, Ox, will you shut up and leave me alone? I can't take your money, but I can take a hint. Not done, though. I left for last the one yes, that I believe yes, gets you killed. <laughs> Just because I have nothing to do uh, right now doesn't mean that I want to spend time talking to a human. I really shouldn't have told you that because I've ruined the joke in a way, but this is the deal. Even for a Seraphon, you sure are one obnoxious, arrogant prick. Oh? Twenty Zogs to anyone who gets this human away from me. <laughs> so you instantly die. <laughs> the bar is apparently frequented by the kind of people who will immediately, without even stopping to think about it, kill you for 20 zocks, whatever that actually means. So let's restore the game and not talk to that guy because nothing good can come of it. Just some dialogue and some death. Uh, I also, in the last video, came across something here. Which is that up shut dust in your lungs if we can take a battery out of this thing. Not really sure what good that... Oh, don't tell me I just crashed the game again. Oh, man. We're over halfway through the video this time. We're already well ahead of, of uh, what was going on with it last time, but... Okay, you know what, I, and for some reason the battery was not at the center of every crash I had in that abandoned video, but it was, it seemed like happening a lot with that, so I'm thinking what I'm going to do, folks, is um, I'm going gonna to kill this, and then I'm going to load, and I'm going to off screen get the battery, because you saw me, you saw me get the battery, you know that I, how I go about getting a battery, and uh, we'll just have to make that be an off-screen adventure. Hike up your pants now like mine. <sighs> Hike up your pants up like mine. So back, kiss myself. Yeah, so we'll do the uh, battery business. Um, or, I mean, the picking up of the battery off-screen. Since that seems to make the game crash a bit. And this is not the most stable game of the universe, but I think it's a, a little bit worse when uh, Cam Studio is running. Did I already talk to... Did I already do this? Did I save after getting the... Probably not, actually. Look, I told you what you wanted to know, so leave me alone! I keep having flashbacks of the nutty professor! Hey, lady! That's Graham! <laughs> Dick. Abysmal! Not happy to see you! Okay, so we're basically done with them. I'm just going to have to go back to that previous video and figure out... Hey, hold on. This is actually important. We need to talk to her, and we need to do it while she's on break. So let's save the game here uh, in case I foul this up. But I wasn't necessarily planning on doing this flashback next, but we've only got so much of a time opening here. Actually, I'm going to ignore her for a moment because... Hold on. Can we talk to any of... Who are you? 
Balushk. The Marlops are sure to know how to make a funny phone sing. He's also pretty spirited with those scalenoids maracoids. Hi, my name's Alias No. How are you? Kind of winded. I could use a break. By the way, we are the Triple T Trio, and I am named Balukish. Alright, well, I have to pull my camp studio window again so I know how long this video has been going. Okay, now I can get back into the action here. Band members, hi! Hi, my name's Alias No. How are you? Hey, bro, leave them alone. They're artists, you dig? They don't relate well to people. Surprised the Seraphins even uh, in the band. What's on your mind, man? Make it quick or I'll have the boss man all over me. The big boss man? Ask about the past. I don't think we have a flashback with this guy, but... You been at this gig a while? A few months. Seems like forever. Ask about the future. Do it. Planning on being a saloon musician your whole life? I'm working on a symphony. If I can get it performed, this band is history. Ask about today. Crash the game. Ugh. How long do I want to give this to sort itself out? Forget it. Killing it now. All right, folks. You're... Believe it or not, this is actually going better than the last time I attempted to record. So, what we're going to do is we're going to ignore that guy this time, and we're going to... There was a specific uh, person I was trying to find to talk to that I remembered. No, wait. I thought you were off the dance floor. I thought that's why I saved. Ah, oh, for Pete's sake. Who is Pete, anyway? Okay, now she's apparently getting off. She's getting off, folks. She's looking at porn like that one person. No, that's the wrong way. I thought, like, a different part of her band. Well, never mind. I'll talk to her. It's Cilia. For a purple chick, she's pretty hot. You know what, though? There's actually something we need to do before we... Or we don't need to do this. There's something that might be beneficial before we talk to her. Sorry. I'm kind of unfocused at the moment. But I'm thinking now what we could do is go read about her species before we engage her flashback. Because it might help. I think she's called a trisec. We'll know in a second when we see the picture. Yep, that would be her. Okay. Trisex overview. The trisex are a species of three genders, each of whom provides a necessary reproductive function and passes along genetic material to their offspring. They are native to the planet Ublik, whose surface is 95% composed of shallow water pierced by plant life. The remaining 5% is dry land, mostly consisting of rocky, uninhabitable islands. Sperm from an alpha male and an egg from a beta male are deposited through three-way copulation into the female's womb, which provides nutrients and, genetic and further genetic material. After one month, a hard shell forms around the embryo and an egg is laid by the female. The egg hatches in two months. The alpha male has an unlimited supply of sperm, but beta males produce only one egg per year. Females make up 60% of the population, while alphas and betas make up 10 and 30% respectively. Long-term, one to one relations exist between beta males and females. Monogamy is insisted upon by the beta male and is mandated by social norm. These relationships are formed during an elaborate annual pairing ritual in which all recently matured beta males choose a female of the same age during a one-month frenzy. These bonds are usually lifelong, and again, due to the cultural norm, although in modern times there have been occasional separations and repairings. Alpha males in short supply form small harems of one or more female beta teams. While he is the focal point of the family unit, the alpha male is not the dominant member. Since females outnumber betas two to one, they face heavy competition to successfully reproduce. Over money and natural selection has allowed only the strongest and most perfect physical specimens among the females to win the beta males and pass on their superior genetic material. Uh, 
the harem and all of its children typically reside together in a large compound where strong females compete with each other for the company of the alpha male, often referred to as the trophy. <laughs> I love this guy. Look at him. Modern times have introduced a decentralization of community structure. It is not rare to find female beta pairs living together in their own houses or apartments with the alpha traveling between households by motorized boat. These situations are known as speedboat marriages. The female's role in the relationship outside of mating and egg laying is to provide for her two partners and their children. This involves tr roles traditionally assumed by males in many other societies, security, breadwinning, etc. The female's dominant trait are therefore physical strength, intelligence, and a dash of attractiveness to help win the heart of a beta male. The alpha male is chosen for his attractiveness and is basically a mating machine. The alpha plays no role in childbearing, breadwinning, or security of the family unit, and thus his dominant trait is raw physical attractiveness. Elves are arrogant, lazy, and self-indulgent, indulgent with the temperament of a small child. In a typical harem, the alpha male makes daily rounds to one or more, sometimes all, female beta households, beta male households based on his own unpredictable whims. The beta male handles nearly all child rearing duties. He tends to be very future-oriented, preferring stable relationships, quiet nights at home, and low-fat foods. Sexually, he is a poor lot. His is a poor lot. He is less physically attracted to the female than his alpha husband, and is often forced to sit out during encounters between the female and alpha, leaving out the beta as a form of birth control. His dominant traits are domest domesticity and productiveness, which helps as he raises and educates his offspring. Alphas are judged to be good or bad based not on physical appearance, but also not only on physical appearance, but also on a commitment to their relationships. A good alpha male doesn't neglect any peers in his harem. There are rare but well-known examples of alpha males whose physical attractiveness and faithful attention has yielded a harem of 50 or more pairs. Likewise, there are well-documented cases where an alpha male has remained loyal to one female beta male pair for his entire lifetime. Half the adult females in tri-state communities go unpaired, though heartbreaking for the females involved. This benefits society, since unpaired females are more productive and devote themselves to their work. Consequently, 95% of important posts in society are held by unpaired females. In modern times, there has been a growing incidence of female-female relations among unpaired females. Many tri-sex still find such a relationship shopping. Shocking, not shopping. <laughs> Freudian slip there, I guess. It is not uncommon for females and the beta male to have a sexual relationship independent of the alpha male's visits, but the gap in physical attractiveness between the beta male and alpha male is usually so pronounced that these female beta male encounters become fewer and fewer as years pass. While the family structure imposes obstacles on alpha beta relationships, these, ops these relationships are not unheard of, although the subject is not discussed among flight company. The Trisec homeworld, Ublik, is rare for having spawned a second intelligent species. This race, the Acromatae, share the planet peacefully with the Trisecs, according to all available literature. It appears that the most positions of the planetary government are held by Acromatae, who claim that the Trisecs lack the temperamental makeup for bureaucratic work. Until recently, it was rare to see any Trisecs away from Ublik. Within the last few decades, the Trisecs have been appearing on re nearby worlds, claiming to be refugees from Acromatae persecution. The Acromatae have successfully argued that such claims are the exaggerations of social misfits and malcontents. As these Trisex immigrants are attempting to immigrate into other societies, only the Trisex females are considered employable. So let's read about the Acromatae, and then um, it'll probably be time to call it a video, or close to it. No. Okay. The Acromatae are one of two intelligent species that evolved on Oblique, the other being the Trisex. Oblique is a planet with the surface covered almost tons with shallow water, pierced by tall grasses and reeds that shape the landscape into a series of canals. Although the two races coexist peacefully, the Acromatae hold all the senior positions in their mutual planetary government and add all dealings with the corporation that controls the Ublik. Members, oh, it's a short one. Members of the Acromatae are rarely seen off-world. When they do venture off-world, they prefer to wear their full body armor at all times, including sleeping and bathing. As a result, little is known about their physical appearance, other than they are bipedal on average about six feet in height. Off-world, they are usually employed as prison guards, SWAT team members, and dentists. All right, so it would appear that all available literature says they are nice and benign, but we know nothing about them, and people keep showing up and claiming to have been persecuted and murdered by them. So let's stare at her uh, like a bunch of pervs until she decides to sit down, at which time we will... Um... Well, do I really feel like waiting? I mean, we've got a save game where... She's already in the right position to talk to us. Maybe her break's already over and I messed up. Do, 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 do. Well, hopefully it wasn't important to read any of that and that we can just figure it out as we go. I, like, now we, you and I, general viewer, know what's going on with her. So it'll be... Oh, it's exactly the same time, though. You and your fruit are still hanging out there. I'm thinking at some point we'll probably have to get her fruit. 
Now I'm just waiting for her to sit down so we can kick off the flashback and maybe save it there. Although maybe now, yeah, now we're like a half an hour. What we'll, what we'll do, folks, is we'll just um, we'll sit down and we'll talk to the trisec female and find out about her past, which sounds like, if I had to venture to guess, it's going to be them trying to escape from the evil Acromati. We'll find out about that in the next video, folks. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you next time. And remember, if you decide to uh, engage in sexual relations with your female or alpha male friend, be sure to leave out that beta male unless you're ready to conceive. See you next time.